Hi there. I'm Gideon Rose, and I'm the editor of Foreign Affairs, and I'm really delighted to be able to be here today with you to talk about our July-August 2011 issue. We have a wonderful author here, Peter Orzog, now at Citigroup, former budget czar of the Obama administration, and uh, he's going to talk to us about his new piece, How Healthcare Can Save or Sink America, The Case for Reform and Fiscal Sustainability. Uh, Peter, you say in your piece that it is no exaggeration to say the U.S. standing in the world depends on its success in constraining health care costs. Unless it does, the country will eventually face a severe fiscal crisis or a crippling inability to invest elsewhere. What is basically the problem? Well, look, between now and 2050, Social Security costs are supposed to rise from 5 percent or projected to rise from 5 percent of the economy to 6. Medicare, Medicaid and other health expenditures from 5.5 to 12. That is our long-term fiscal problem, basically, period. The Obama administration put forward a health care reform bill to try to deal with this. Uh, in your view, problem, solution, step in the right direction, what? Step in the right direction and could be a significant step if it's executed well, if it's implemented efficiently. So it's got effectively most of the levers that people have come up with, with one exception that I write about uh, on medical malpractice. But it's got all of the tools there that can be deployed to lead to a more efficient healthcare system over time, one that emphasizes value. But the question is whether those levers will be used and, uh, or whether our polarized political system will impede that happening. You seem like a nice wonky guy. I don't see a big Stalin mustache or a Karl Marx beard. I mean, why are you the face of the, this uh, attempt to uh, turn America into a socialist state? <laughs> I, I don't know that I am. but. Uh, Look, I think that really speaks to uh, the dramatic polarization in our politics today, which is being driven by residential segregation and, a, and the blogosphere. And uh, I think a core problem is uh, that we're moving away from fact-based discussions, unfortunately. So what exactly is the essence of the success that Obamacare or the administration's health reform program uh, might have and the remaining parts of the puzzle that need to be addressed? Well, basically, if you're going to get at health care costs, what you need to do is get at the high cost cases because that's where all the money is. If you take Medicare beneficiaries and you rank them by their costs, the top 25% of beneficiaries account for 85% of Medicare costs. You have to get at those costs. And indeed, that's one of the reasons why consumer-directed approaches like that embodied in Representative Ryan's plan may help a little, but they don't really get at the core problem because uh, you're always going to be providing deep third-party insurance against those high costs, even under a consumer-directed approach, so you don't get that much traction from his kind of approach. Instead, what we need to recognize is that's where the money is, and there are two ways of approaching it. You can try to prevent those cases in the first place, and we should be doing all that we can, but we're going to wind up with lots of those cases anyway. And to a first approximation, the health care delivered in those cases is what the provider's recommending. I, I actually, we just had a personal uh, uh, family example of this. We have uh, two PhDs in the family and uh, my father was in an ICU and we have all access to you know, leading medical professionals across the country, but the fact of the matter is the care that was delivered was what the doctor on the ground was recommending. And if you combine those observations, then you have to focus on those high cost cases and you have to focus on what the, in particular what the provider is recommending in those high cost cases. The bill does lots of things that will help alter that trajectory, including health information technology investments, which actually were part of the stimulus bill, but are, are part of the sort of overall package here, more research into what works and what doesn't in healthcare, and beginning the process of changing the incentives that providers face. We now, we now have a situation where hospitals can succeed in doing uh, things that make sense, like reduce readmission rates to uh, after you've been discharged from the hospital, and then conclude that they can't afford to continue the practice because they're losing out on the additional payments when you're readmitted. So that makes no sense. The incentives we for... absolutely have to change the incentives towards value and away from quantity. But won't spending less ultimately mean suffering more? Not necessarily. And in fact, there, I think there's a wide array of evidence suggesting that there are significant inefficiencies in the way we deliver health care. So as one example, Healthcare costs vary substantially across the United States. In some areas, they're dramatically higher, let's say twice as high, or 50% higher in some areas than other areas. And the bulk of the evidence suggests we don't get better outcomes in those higher spending areas or regions. Similarly, within hospitals, uh, there are examples of just dramatic variations in utilization rates 
across doctors. Sometimes they don't even recognize that until you put in a system that lets them benchmark against each other. And where you have been able to reduce the kind of really intense providers, you have not seen a dramatic uh, a reduction in quality. So, so we actually can get something for nothing. We actually, there is a free lunch out there to it's be gotten. It's very challenging. It exists, but the challenge is in capturing that opportunity. And, uh, and that's going to involve uh, an evolutionary process. This is not like snap your fingers and all of a sudden costs disappear. But th it's also not theoretical. We have real life examples in the United States of institutions that are delivering high quality, higher quality than elsewhere care at lower cost, at you know, 30, 40 percent lower than other institutions. They tend to have a lot of health information technology. They tend to use that to study what works and what doesn't. They tend to have doctors on salary so that the financial incentives aren't, uh, and they tend to coordinate care. The question becomes how can, which ones of those in particular are driving those better cost quality outcomes at those particular places, and how can we replicate that elsewhere? There you have it. Everything you wanted to know about healthcare reform, the next issue of Foreign Affairs, Peter Orzog, July, uh, August 2011 issue of FA, available at the end of June on newsstands and to subscribers earlier.